So here's one not many people think about, the manifestations of COPD on the ECG. People say COPD changes the ECG. Well, let me answer that with this small photo collage. I'll give you a second to get the joke. So what changes? Well, we can see low voltage QRSs in some leads, especially in your V4, V5, and V6. Um, there's often presence of extra air in between the electrodes and the heart in your barrel chested patients, so that can change some of the uh, the morphology we see by, by lowering the voltage of the QRS that we can see, right? This has to cover more space. There's more air there as you get to the lateral side of the body. You can see a prominent P wave in the inferior lead, so they can be tall and peaked. They can be, you know, pretty strong. You can see flattened P waves in the lateral leads in one and ABL. Uh, you can see right axis deviation, um, and this is usually due to right atrial enlargement. There's right ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, there's pulmonary hypertension and stuff is associated with this disease, at, as well as the deep breaths and the frequent respirations cause an actual rotation of the heart inside the body. We can also see the manifestations of core pulmonale, which is a manifestation of the right side of the heart being overloaded, and this is usually due to hypertension. Um, this is one of the things that kind of comes with the things that can bring on COPD as well as the disease itself. And then sometimes we can actually see it manifest with the right bummer branch block as well. Now, anytime you're evaluating an ECG and you, you think you should see this stuff, just remember you don't have to have every single sign, but uh, you know a certain percentage of these with all of the other things that go along with the manifestations of the COPD patient, the coarse lung sounds, frequent respirations, history of smoking or other exposure to the lungs, things like that, all of it kind of comes together for a diagnosis of COPD. So why do we need to learn to look for this kind of stuff to support a diagnosis, right? People get diagnosed with COPD and that's how we know they have it, right? Wrong. How many people have you been to or how many people do you know or maybe have in your own family who just don't go to the doctor? Chances are, if you're a paramedic and watching this, you probably don't go to the doctor until you yourself are near death. We are terrible for that. So do understand that there may be times where you have to kind of support your own field diagnosis here and proceed with treatment with a patient who doesn't have an official diagnosis of COPD. So let's have a look at an ECG. What do we see right here? We can see that low voltage QRS as we get to V5 and V6. We can see everything being low voltage in one and ABL, which is kind of responsible for our, our you know, P waves not looking so great. But then look at two, three, and ABF and those inferior leads. Look at those P waves. They almost look like extra QRS complexes, don't they? And of course, you can see um, if there were degrees on this, you, you would see some right axis deviation. You can also calculate the axis of an ECG by looking at the most equiphasic lead. And there are other videos online to show you how to, how to calculate that. I won't go through it here in the interest of brevity. So this is one of those things you might want to think about and study on your COPD patients and use your online resources to familiarize yourself with this type of morphology and then you will be prepared to recognize and treat something that maybe doesn't have an official diagnosis in that patient yet. Got to get out of your comfort zone, right? That's where the magic happens. Get out there and practice.